our next talk is from our very own uh, interface programmer extraordinaire, uh, Jose Luis. Uh, he is the one responsible for all of the cool radials, the anything that looks good, the Taxon Works Together website he put together uh, this year, which look, made us look like much more professional than we are. Um, that's all that goodness is from Jose, and we're happy to have him introduce uh, and sort of be the primary talk on Taxon Works Together about our companion software. So Taxon Works is an editing platform. Uh, you log in and you sort of curate with your research team or your or your uh, your team of collaborators. And um, we wanted to, of course, produce similar um, things from the species file group as we had for species files. Like these are public accessible taxon pages. And so we've created a new bit of software, which we hope is generic. Uh, we, it draws from Taxon Works right now, but we hope that we could draw from anywhere. So for example, you could use this as a wrapper on top of EOL APIs if you wanted to um, display Taxon pages with this framework. So Jose, take it away. Thank you, Matt. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Jose Pereira, multimedia designer and software developer at the Specify Group. And today I'm going to present you a new product that has been developing since last year called Taxon Pages, an open source software that serves as a tool to create public interfaces for Taxon Works project. So this integration is the key to displaying the most up-to-date, reliable, and comprehensive data on species and taxonomy relationships, making it accessible to scientists, educators, and general public interested in the natural world. The public interfaces ensure that the data is not locked away in the hands of a few experts, but is available to all who are curious and are passionate about life on the Earth. So let's talk about its main features. One of the most important is the tax page module that provides friendly interfaces to display all the information related to the taxon name and OTUs. It has responsive design that adapt to any device, whether you're using a mobile phone, a tablet, or a desktop computer. It is designed to be used by any kind of user, researchers with a minimal technical knowledge. So if you don't know how to code, you don't have to worry about it. It is very easy to use and have your site online. It is fully customized by configuration files that allow you to change many aspects of your site. Another thing I would like to mention is that Taxon Pages is a framework. It has a folder system, dynamic routing, global components, and utility that simplifies the development of new features, making the whole development process really easy. Also, Taxon Pages lets you to create new pages like Home and About. It has components that will help you to apply fancy designs to them. Also, if you don't know how to code in HTML or CSS, you can use Markdown format to write and style your content. It is support GitHub page deployment out of the box. So if you don't have a hosting or you don't know anything about it, don't worry. You can use this service completely free and have your pages online. Every time you make a change, your site will be built and deployed using GitHub Actions. The best part, the best part is that Taxon pages work this way by default. So you don't have to do anything special. Just start your project, set up your configuration files, and you're ready to go. So <clears throat> this year, our focus has been getting taxon pages ready for production by implementing a number of new features and improvements. One of the most important aspects is the search engine optimization, which is how search engines like Google find and display the content, improving page ranking in search results and reaching more people. For this, we implement server-side rendering. This means that taxon pages generates the code from the server side <clears throat> before sending to the user's browser. We also add a configuration to set up the project metadata information. And additionally, we add a schema markdown, no bus, no bus as via schema to enrich the information in research and make it easy for both user and search engine to understand the content. <laughs> we also added, um, included support for analytic services. These new features allow you to track the SAT traffic and user, use interaction using the popular tools like Google Analytics. And finally, for taxon pages, we have included four new panels. And also, we introduced a change that allowed you to modify the layout of taxon pages. In addition, it's now possible to add panels created by users. And this panel can also be used to get external resources from other platforms. So I'm going to show you a demo that will give you a visual introduction to taxon pages and how you can set up your own site in a few minutes. 
The process of displaying taxon pages in GitHub Actions usually takes between one or two minutes. These actions were cut from the video to speed up the process. Let me do some changes before share this. Okay, there we go. I'm going to show you how to say I have to change something first. Set up your own taxon pages for your taxon works project. This is the taxon pages repository. Here's where we provide all the configuration files and instructions to set up your site. The first thing we have to do is press the fork button. Then we uncheck the options to only copy setup branch. We press create fork and then we wait GitHub pages create our repository. Then we go to settings, pages, and in the branch section, we select GitHub pages branch. Press save, and that's it. Now we have to wait to GitHub Actions finish the process to build and deploy our site. Every time we make a change to the configuration files, GitHub will build and deploy any version. It is green which it means that the workflow process has finished and now that our site is online. What we have to do is set up the API access to allow Taxon pages get the data from TaxonWorks. Then we go to the configuration folder and we open the API file. Once it is open, go to TaxonWorks project and click on project link. Here, we are going to copy the project token which will allow us to access the data from taxon pages. If you don't see the project token, click on it and select the option to generate a new one. We paste the project token into the configuration file and we set the taxon works server address. We save the changes and we refresh the page and we see that taxon pages is working as expected. What you're seeing now is the home page. Taxon Pages by default provides a template for home and about pages. Both templates can be modified in the pages folder. So, I'm going to search a species. As you can see, while I type in, I'm getting some results. That means that the API configuration is correct and Taxon Pages is able to get the data from Taxon Works. What you see right now on your screen is the Taxon page. It displays the information related to the OTU and the Taxon name. At the top of the page, we can navigate through the taxon hierarchy. Below this, the taxon rank, name and common name are displayed. Then we have the panels, that provides different kind of information about this taxon. At the moment, taxon pages provide 9 different panels. Image gallery, distribution, type designation, type specimen, nomenclature citations, nomenclature references, the sense and synonyms, contents and statistics. Keep in mind that some of these panels could be present or not, depending on the taxon rank. The sitemap bottom gives you a list of taxon works endpoints used to fill these interfaces. All the information you see in the taxa pages came from taxon works in JSON format. Next to the sitemap is the Darwin Core bottom, which is used to download a list of specimen records in Darwin Core format. Okay. Let's talk about colors. Taxon pages provide two different color modes, light and dark. Both are fully customizable by configuration file. For example, to change the primary color, we have to go to the configuration folder, then style folder, and open the thin CSS file. The format of this value is in RGB color mode. To change them, we only have to replace these numbers for the new ones. If you need help getting the color values in RGB, you can do using tools like Photoshop or one of the many colors charts on the internet. We save the changes. We wait for GitHub Actions to finish. We refresh the page. And that's it. Okay, I really like how this is starting to look like. Everything seems to look great. But we still have to do some changes. For example, let's add some information related to the copyright and the project. For that, we have to go again to the configuration folder and open the copyright file. 
I already have the information I want to use. So I'm going to paste it. I'm going to say the changes. And then we're going to open the project file. I already have the information for this file, so I'm going to paste it. Again, we say the changes. And finally, we are going to open header file to change the title at the nav bar by the project name. We say the changes. We refresh the page. And now we have the name of the project at the nav bar and we have the copyright information at the footer. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is a new feature that allows you to add new tabs and panels. For this example, I created a simple panel to display the type specimen list with their images. So, what we have to do is drop this folder into the setup branch. And we save the changes. Next step is modify the taxon page layout. We go to the configuration folder and then we open the taxa page file. We remove example from the file name. Then we add a new tab called specimen records and we specify that we only shall be available for a species group. Then we put the identification used for this panel. We save it and we refresh the page. Now we have two tabs, the overview which is the default view for taxon pages and the specimen record which is the new one we have defined. If we click on the specimen record we will see our new panel with the list of type material. Let's try another taxon that has type images. Okay, so we have seen how to set up taxon pages and make some customizations to our pages but there are still more things you can do with it. For more information, visit the official taxon page repository at GitHub. Okay, so as we saw in demo, it's possible to include more resources into taxon pages. Yesterday, some people were asking about getting data from iNaturalist. <clears throat> so for this presentation, I created another panel. I'm gonna show you we can get these images from the naturalist. So as you can see, taxon pages is getting these images from these species from the Shinos decropolis. So if I go to one of these, let's see one, let's go to Elongatus. So now I see the images that come from Elongatus. If I click to one of these images, I'm redirected to iNaturalist, where I get all the information related to this observation. So I have to show, want to show you that. Okay, to close this. So to finish, I would like to mention that there are about 70 projects that have been migrating from the Spiget file software to TaxonWorks. And these projects are starting to be used taxon pages for their public view. Some of these projects are in this list. I will copy and paste the links into the chat if any one of you want to see them. If you have a taxon work project and you want to play a little with taxon pages, please visit taxon pages repository in GitHub. I will put the link in the chat and also I will share the demo video. If you follow the instructions there, you will easily have your site online in a few minutes. But if you need help, of course, you can contact us directly on Gitter chat and we'll be happy to help you. So, okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we hope to see more people start using taxon page in a new feature. Thanks, Jose.